from the Flock of Birds Production Studio, it's time for the Mountaineer Ramble with your hosts, John Covey Cole, Michael Covey, and Jack Kincaid. Now, let's join the guys and talk Mountaineer football. McCoy got three tailbacks in there with the quarterback, and it'll be true freshman McCoy touchdown, West Virginia. Pressure coming. Kaya's another high throw that's knocked down incomplete. Miami's movement, a lot of negative yardage plays have been forced by the Hurricane defense. There's a negative play for West Virginia's defense sack. That's the fourth for Miami tonight. Howard over the middle. It's caught. Shorts inside the 10. They just lost two yards. And here's Howard keeping it. And Howard takes it in for the touchdown. There you have it, guys. Unfortunately, them old nerdy hurricanes got us. Uh, still, we finished the season 10 and 3. Yeah, 17 and 4 lifetime against Miami. Yeah, that's yeah. not that's we we hopefully we get our chance at him again soon. Hey, you know, I, I, I think we definitely all. won that uh, bathroom brawl though. <laughs> if you guys wow. if you guys haven't seen that, look that up there. Off, mm -hmm. uh, I imagine a veteran with uh, one leg got imagine he got his leg blown off in the service or something maybe. But if you guys haven't seen it I mean, he could have lost it in prison. I don't know. I don't want to make been, a value judgment there, been, but yeah. uh, I I don't think he was messing around. He did go to prison. We do have that fact. At least that's, that's I, I don't what think he's it was messing around. Put the kids to bed before you watch that. Though. Uh, YouTube red. Kevin Hart comes in there trying to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Just look it up. It, it won't be hard to find. You've probably already seen it, but yeah. check it out. Miami yeah. fan trying to jump line and old dude about to pee on him. And it's hilarious. Uh, but that, that other than <laughs> other than that guy in the bathroom at the urinal and the marching band, that's pretty much. The only Mountaineers that decided to show up to handle their business there yeah. at the Russell Athletic Bowl, uh, unfortunately. Kind of rough. First quarter started out good. Uh, I think we come out of the first quarter 7 to nothing. 7 nothing. And then it was just downhill from there. Miami got their ducks in a row. They was so fast. So fast. Uh, a lot of favorable calls went their way. Yeah. But I'm not going to be that guy. So Probably not I'm, enough to flip the game. No. Nah. Uh, a couple uh, interception pass interception. Interference calls were called. Sure. Well, the first one, okay, maybe, maybe. The second one, absolutely not. And I'm pretty sure Toyus Avery was both of those interceptions, and then he got called, which is uh, you crap. know, I mean, people are just gonna say it, and they're just gonna keep doing it. When you bring it up, you look like uh, you know it's sour grapes or a few other no, things. I, you call oh, you're making excuses. Sure. No, I'm just um, state facts, man. You got to state facts, and you got to say that uh, that happens to us an inordinate amount of times. I mean, probability dictates that it wouldn't come up as much as it does. Right. I don't know. Uh, Shelton Gibson really surprised me. He had, had a couple uh, really crucial penalties there late yeah. in the game. Uh, that's not his character. He don't roll like that usually. I'm sure it's frustrating. I mean, it was frustrating to watch. So I can't. I can imagine it's it's. It's pretty frustrating to, to strap it up and play. Skylar and Howard that. really didn't play too bad, considering 17-26, <clears throat> 134 yards, and a fumble. That um, turnover always seems to come up with him. Um, but all in all... Moving on. <laughs> all in all, Skylar, you did uh, what you could in that game. Uh, Miami was just faster and wanted it more. I mean, they were fast. Uh, the thing that, that, that killed me that I didn't... The thing that I don't understand is we played big and powerful lines before, fast guys. You look at Texas. Texas doesn't have a lot going on for it except natural big. athleticism. Yeah, yeah. Big, fast, strong. You know, uh, uh, Kansas State, much in the same way. I don't know where our game was that we threw up against Kansas State that we couldn't throw up against a, a, a young Miami team. I don't really know. Um, you know, back in the day when we were kids – 
we had a real bad reputation of going to bowl games and, and partying and you know that I don't know that I don't know that that's the case going anymore. Going to the bathroom, trying to pee on people. And... I mean, things happen, you know. I mean, it's, it's you know. It's Skylar so... Howard was also our leading rusher. That right there is exactly why Miami won, in my opinion. Bad they news. stopped the run. Yeah, they stopped the run. They were we couldn't we, establish a line of scrimmage. No, they were in you know our backfield pretty much all the time. Um, yeah, a lot of bad, not a lot of good. Um, Miami didn't run that effectively on us either, but they were throwing the ball a little bit better with that Brad Kaya. Uh, well, you can tell the difference when he settles down in the second quarter yeah. and really just it, dusts it, us for, was, for three he's, he's quick ones. He's a good ball player. Good ball player. Yeah. Miami's going to get back to being Miami again. Uh, and, you know, much like we say with Ohio State and a few other Ohio teams. Ohio State? Is that still a thing? Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Sanctions will come up. Okay. Uh, they'll, they'll unfortunately become Miami again. And then it'll you know, cycle I don't know back what down. was more entertaining this weekend, Jack. Ohio State getting beat like a government mule. I mean, I, I, Ronda I, Rousey getting her head rocked again. What, what, what do or, you got against Ronda? I mean, or Mariah Carey just totally. Yeah, now that it was, one, it was an interesting weekend. Though. That one I got nothing for. <laughs> Look the meme up. A uh, couple guys was doing their things, but we you know we could always just do so much against uh, Miami. Um, the Kill Shorts had five receptions with sixty-one mm-hmm. yards. Shelton had three. 24 yards. Javon Durant had three, 22 yards. Devontae Mathis had one for 11 yards. Um, like I said already, Skylar Howard was our leading rusher. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen everybody in there at one point. Uh, I'll tell you mm-hmm. what really bothers me, Jack. That first grounds touchdown, gears. it grounds my gears bad. In the first quarter, we scored that touchdown. They come out there and lined up in that diamond, had all three of the running backs in there mm-hmm. at one time. Why did we not go back to that? Why did we not go back to that? I don't understand it. Uh, look, it seems like when we're not establishing the things that we want to establish, and well, Gibby said so coming out of the first half. Well, like, he said that uh, when things when things don't go uh, according to plan, this has happened time and time again. This season, seasons past, when they don't establish what they want to do, play calling for some reason becomes questionable. They smother out, start trying. It, it's it's they start throwing things at the board and seeing what uh, sticks. And and you're right. Why did they go away from that? I don't understand. A lot of bubble screens in this ball game, which we haven't seen a lot of those all season. Um, they was not working. Screens but are stupid we kept going until back they work. Them. I mean, it's great to do a screen when it's off guard or when you have the speed that Oregon had a couple of years ago when uh, what you call it was there. It works, but you work with what you got. I just um, go downfield. Another thing yeah. that was killing me was uh, our defensive backs playing 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. They was eating yeah. us alive. Eating yeah. us alive. Yeah. That's that speed I was talking about earlier. Yeah. But I just, I wasn't, I wasn't blown away with Miami. I was blown away with how poorly we performed as a team. Um, Miami's going to get better. Miami, you know, will probably have a run at some point, you know, but eh, that wasn't. It was just they didn't they didn't shock and awe me. But yeah, ultimately, um, I made a post the other day. You may have seen it. I put it on the Facebook there. I don't um, use the social media. Don't do the face boxes and all that. Mm-hmm. Them havens. Nah. Well, it said uh, bottom line. There were some mistakes made by the players, mm-hmm. by the coaches. Uh, play calling wasn't there. You know, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, it's not so much that we got outplayed, which we did, but I felt better about the Oklahoma loss than I did the loss against Miami because Oklahoma loss, we pretty much give that one to them. We was playing yeah. horrible. Well, we played we played down a half, and then you're still – you don't have those two fumbles, and you take those two fumbles in, we're up one. Now, I'm not saying we hold that lead and we win that game. Uh-huh. But we're not we're not taking an ass beating uh, at the end of that game like that. That's right. not going to happen. So, I look. I said it. I said it again. Uh, nothing bad against Miami, but Miami's a young team. All they should do is get better, unless the sanctions get them early. You know, pull the fruit off the vine early. Speaking of know? sanctions, Minnesota's in trouble now. Did you see that? They just fired their. I, I don't care about them. I really don't. <laughs> um, but like. 
no, I, it was really a point of us just for the third time this season, really not showing up, really not doing the work and getting outplayed by a team that really isn't, you play that game again. I mean, you know, prove to me that that speed is that like much the, greater. I don't, like, it. I don't like the two to three weeks off before a ball game. You, you, really that's know. a good example right there where it can affect you. You know, we Miss were tackles. thinking about yeah, yeah, right. You get out of that rhythm. We were talking about it on the healing side of it, which is good. That's good, yeah. But, but you know, your you're losing is, you're losing that everyday grind yeah. of hitting somebody and I agree. You know, going through the motions as a machine. And I didn't mean to cut you off, but I really could care less about that whole Minnesota thing. Look, I was with you when you wanted to sit out and put a put a uh, a central digit up to the bloviated bowl system and playoff system that we have. When you magically decide that you want to come in and play that game now, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. What's, I don't what's, care. What's it's 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 backtracking. If if you're going to be a man of your word, so to speak. And you want to be strong about your opinions and your values. If you change your mind like that right there, what does that say about your opinion? Tupac wrote a song about it, man. <laughs> Tupac. Like here, here you go. Here you like to hear it. Here you go, <laughs> guys. Uh, there's no use continuing to talk about it. Uh, Miami got us, you old dirty rascals. Yeah. Um, we finished season ten and three. Uh, but uh, we are going to take a quick commercial break. Check out with one of our sponsors, and we'll come back with Noble. Wachuku. No Wachuku? Noble. Noble. Wachuku. We'll, we'll come back with Noble with him. Yep. Be right back. The Mountaineer Ramble, sponsored in part by El Mariachi, Mexican restaurant and cantina on Airport Road in Beaver. Open seven days a week, offering a mouth-watering array of delicious Mexican cuisine. Stop by and see Jay and Jose, and you'll see for yourself why El Mariachi was voted the best Mexican restaurant in southern West Virginia. El Mariachi will spice up your day. All right, guys, we got uh, Noble. Uh, help me out here, man. I've heard your name pronounced probably 12 different ways this season. How do you pronounce your last name, my man? It's pronounced Wachuku. Wachuku, see? Uh, that's that's the most latest one I heard, so, so I should have just stuck with my guns. I was like, that's it. I think you got it right, though. It's a, it's a good leadoff question, too, yeah. JCC. Um, How you doing, Noble? This is Jack Kincaid. How are you, man? I'm doing good. Oh, doing real good, man. Heck of a season, bro. I oh, appreciate that. Oh, we really enjoyed it, man. Ten wins is uh, always a good season in uh, Mountaineer Nation's eyes, brother. We appreciate you. Definitely, I appreciate. Uh, we've, we've talked about it a lot on the show. One thing I we we all really enjoyed about uh, at least the defensive side of the ball was you guys seemed really unselfish and you came to work uh, a lot. You know, I mean, you were you were a real working man's defense. There weren't any like uh, wasn't any real uh, selfishness. It looked like to me, and I love that about you guys. Definitely, I agree. Uh, let me ask you a couple questions here, Noble. Uh, whenever you come to WVU, were there any other schools looking at you? And ultimately, why did you choose to come to WVU? Well, there was a couple of other schools, uh, smaller schools. A couple of schools like uh, Kansas and uh, West Kentucky. Um, what else? Uh, schools like, uh, on top of my head, yeah, I had Houston. Just a couple of schools, but uh, yeah, W really stands out to me because of uh, the family atmosphere on like, my fifth. I just loved it, so pretty much couldn't turn it down. Well, like I already said, man, we appreciate having you, brother. You did a great job while you was there. Appreciate it. We've got you and Justin aren't tied for the team's lead with seven and a half tackles for loss, but uh, looks like you edged them out with four sacks this year. Way to go, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I got a question that uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, Mountaineer fans are curious about. You being on the inside, you could help me answer this question. We've all seen Dana on the sideline losing his cool, which I understand. I'd probably be the same way. But in your opinion, who is uh, grouchier when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, Dana or Gibby? Man, that's a hard one. That's a tough one. They, both, they, both, they both get grouchy. <laughs> <laughs> They want their job done right, huh? They what? I said they want the job done right, huh? Exactly. 
they're 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 perfectionists, so and they're really passionate about the job. So you know, uh, they don't take that they don't take stuff lightly, uh, and they really got to bob by the rules or uh, edit. So, right. Well, Noble, we've got yeah. you recorded as. Uh, go ahead, man. Nah, I was just saying, if I had to choose, I'd pick okay. Right on. Tell us something that, uh, and we get to see Dana a lot on the sidelines. I mean, you know, there's always a always a camera in, in a head coach's face, but uh, uh, tell us something, uh, it doesn't have to be good or bad, but tell us something interesting about Gibby that uh, nobody would know unless you played for him. About uh, Dana? Uh, yeah, about uh, Coach Gibson, but uh, you can tell us one about Dana too. That'd be fine. Okay. No, nah, I'll go ahead and tell you one about Coach Gibson. Uh, the thing about Coach Gibby is that he, I mean, off the field, he's a pretty laid back guy, pretty laid back, uh, chill dude. Just he uh, is real family oriented and uh, he's a real nice guy. But you know, on the field, it's different. Kind of got to flip the switch flip when he comes switch, out. Right? Yeah. I, I got an interesting question for you, Noble. Um, we both happen to be there whenever Oklahoma come to town, and uh, there's no need to relive it, but you, you know what happened. What was your initial thought there in the pregame when they come out and stomped around and was dancing on our logo? So what was going through my head? Or? Yeah, yeah. This is very disrespectful. I mean, uh, Coach, Coach told us pregame that he was going to do something like that. He warned us, you know. And he was like, uh, he was like, just don't let him do it. Whatever you do, don't let him go out there on, on a 50 yard, 50 yard line and jump around. So when I mean, we saw that, we had to immediately, uh, how's that? Deal with it. Yeah. I thought the, I thought everybody's going to get thrown out the game there before they even started for a minute. Yeah, it got pretty rowdy. Well, you know, I mean, we didn't have a great half to start with, but you guys fought your way back in that second half, and uh, you know, it was if we had a couple of, a couple of things go right for us there, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's a whole different ball game. So, you know, lessons learned, right. I guess. And not only that, but you know, I know football is a team sport, but you guys covered our ass many a times this year on defense, man. Offense wasn't yeah. clicking, and you guys would come out and uh, you know shut them out to punt the ball or get a field goal. I mean, I, I don't have the stat in front of me, but you guys did phenomenal keeping them out, keeping most of the teams out of the end zone this year. No, I, de I definitely feel like the offense is deeper. You know, we're doing bad, they pick us up, and they, you know, they're doing bad, we pick them up. So that's how it we're works, right? That. I think you guys played, you know, with a with a great philosophy of, of Ben don't break. You know, um, you certain games you almost refused to give up any big plays. You know, um, you kept them out there, wore them down, beat them down, and then, you know, individually, uh, you look at it right here. You're finishing up your career with 15 and a half sacks. Uh, that puts you in in the top 10. Uh, you've got 29 and a half tackles for loss. And uh, you, that's going to uh, put you about a half a sack outside of the top ten, right behind Mr. Bruce Irvin. So really good company. So it's not like uh, anybody was playing down, but you know sometimes it's it's hard to look back and and believe you guys did all that. And and you being one of the standouts uh, among a few others, I mean, you guys really had a stellar performance and were really you guys were sledgehammer most of the season, man. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt in our minds, uh, Noble, that you are going to be going. We said where you were invited to the draft. Congratulations, my man. Yeah, uh, I appreciate it. But there's no doubt in my mind that you're going to get picked up. Is there any particular team that you would like to get drafted by? And is there any particular team that you would not like to be drafted by? Well, uh, no, there's, there's no team I wouldn't like to be I'll, I'll go play for anybody. But if I had to do the team, it'd probably be the, the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, you're uh, yeah. yeah. I uh, I couldn't I couldn't hear what you were saying there, Noble. We'll just move on. Uh, <laughs> He's a Redskins fan, Noble. We won't hold that against him. Now. 
Go fight for old DC, baby. <laughs> well, no, but that's pretty much all we got for you today, man. We just wanted to get you on and get a quick chat. But before we go, uh, is there anything that you would like to tell any uh, potential commits coming to West Virginia as to why they should come to West Virginia to play football? Is there anything I would tell them? It's a very family-oriented uh, spot. Uh, we practice hard, we play hard. Uh, we play with the chip on our shoulder and uh, we play to win. It's all the recruits. If you want to win, it's up to you. That's right. There you go. Well, hey, again, congratulations on all the on a really successful season, Noble, and best of luck in the NFL draft. Uh, you made us proud as Mountaineer fans, so take care of yourself. Appreciate it. All right, brother. Well, hopefully Thanks, we'll man. chat again soon, my man. All right. Appreciate it, man. Welcome back anytime. All right. Bye-bye. Right, well, there you have it, guys. A uh, little quick catch-up with Noble. Oh, Noble Wachuku. Wachuku. There he is. Excuse me. Wachuku. Wachuku. I'll, I'll mess it up again. Sure. But um, it's a pleasure having you on, sir. Guys, uh... We're losing a lot of people this year. Mm. 21. Uh, yeah. Um, here's a few of them. Justin Art, uh, Sean Walters, Darren Howard, Noble Wachuku. Thank you, sir. Christian Brown, Antonio Crawford. Which Crawford really, you know, he's, he impressed me at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. and, Tailed off. And then he got hurt, and he wasn't right after that. Uh, Rasul Douglas, he's going to be missed. He had a phenomenal career mm -hmm. in just two years in Morgantown. Finished up with eight interceptions, uh, second most in the season in school history behind Mr. Aaron Beasley in 1994. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, good, good crowd to be in right there. 77 tackles in two years he was there. That's phenomenal. Killing it. Uh, Nana Kyrum, is that right? Maybe. Uh, we heard Kyrum. his name. No, Nana K Y E R E M E H. Kyram, me, hey. <laughs> Maurice Fleming, uh, he's leaving. Uh, Jared Harper. But, Dream I'll ask you, Henry should be healthy next year, so we'll mm -hmm. get another look at him. Um, Jeremy Tyler's leaving. Uh, Toya Savory played a lot in the bowl game. We've got to see a lot of him. Uh, he's going to be replacing him more than likely. Uh, can't, can't, I don't have any idea, Jack. Give that a shot. Which one? Right there. Oh, uh, Kari? Uh, Ki, uh, it's uh, Kahari Sharif. Okay. Or Sharif. Sorry. Yeah, something like that. I shot the Sharif. Hey, now. Hey, now. Let's we got Marvin Gross uh, looking at him. That's our defense right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve people off defense. Suffice it to say, we're always putting in a standing order for greedy backs, greedy receivers. We're looking for some greedy defensive players, too, <laughs> that want to play in a team structure. Well, How about this that? Crew, That's the rub. This crew right here really surprised me. It surprised us all because we was kind of iffy about how our defense was going to be this year. And the defense was the highlight of our team this year. It seemed to me, I mean, you never saw those guys getting down on each other. And they were always complimenting each other, both on the field, you know, between plays. But also with their play on right. the field. I mean, a real team unit that went in there and started making people notice them. You know, and it was really, I mean, you, you said it, man. They saved us. Yeah. Uh, more than once and really let that offense get out there and get a second chance to go and, you know, establish and set up. And, you know, really, Dana said about midseason, we're at our best when defense is complimenting offense and, and vice versa. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, kudos to them, man. They will be missed. 21 altogether, offense and defense. We'll uh, be moving some on. Some of the offensive guys leaving, Tony Mateo, Tyler Orlowski, Adam Pankey, that's going to hurt. Well, uh, we, a couple Colton things McKibbin's up. come in. He did a great job. Kyle Bosch is still there. Hopefully, Yadmi Kajust or Kajust Kajust, yeah. Uh, we'll be back around. So, we, we should be okay there. But... Well, I'll tell you tell a couple things about uh, Tyler Orlovsky. Uh, made the uh, first uh, first team selection. 
uh, marked for the senior class All American Award, uh, and first in WVU history. Uh, also named to the Associated Press, Football Writers Association, USA Today, CBS Sports.com, SB Nation, Athlon Sports, and SI.com All American teams. Played in 50 career games, started 42 of them, uh, all of which at center, and he's a two time team captain. Uh, one of three finalists for this year's Remington Trophy. Uh, that was uh, won by the butt kid out of uh, LSU, Michigan. I'm thinking of uh, the other butt kid, LSU. Like his last name is Butt or Butte or B U T T E. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, we were talking about him earlier in the season. I think he was one of your disappointments of the week. Or maybe it was one of Mikey's fun bits. No, it was that butt thing, you know. No, no, we was talking about the guy named the Josh. ball was back here and it no, made it a first down. For the, it was made a first down for the team and then made a case for the other Look team. Look at the archive, that guys. Likes Look to at get the archive. Into the, to get into the playoff. Anyway. All right, so uh, did real, real good. How about that? All right, uh, Remington Trophy finalist, unanimous, first team, Big 12, uh, all Big 12 selection. Uh, three academic All-Americans uh, to boot if uh, his, his trophy case wasn't uh, big enough. So, great job, dude. I've been a fan of yours all season. Uh, what really got me on there was when you about snapped Skyler's head off and then you got... Passion. That's all I seen yeah. that boy's eyes was passion. You got back together and, uh, and uh, brought home a, a victory that day. So, I mean, real good play, man. Devontae Mathis, he hasn't done a whole lot, but he has been there at times making plays for us. Uh, Russell Shell's leaving, but we still have Justin Crawford, Kenny McCoy, and Martel Petaway. Um, Russell Shell wasn't real healthy this year a lot of the time. Um... So now Justin Crawford holds the record for most rushing yards for a first-year Mountaineer. <laughs> now, a little bit of an asterisk there. He's coming in from a uh, Juco career where he was really stellar. Uh, the other Speaking two guys, of the Juco career and him, uh, I was watching Last Chance You the other day with uh, Clint Trigg. Have you seen it? It's on Netflix? No. It's uh, Look it up. It's awesome. I'll tell you about it off the air. But they were playing. East Mississippi was playing. I think it was West Mississippi. And you know who their running back was that was trying to defend was? Justin Crawford. Nice. Very cool. Well, him finishing as, uh, uh, with uh, uh, 1,184 yards uh, puts him up there with Steve Slate and Noel Devine. Well, they were freshmen, but that's a heck of a start. Look for big things out of him next year, you know. And, again, another Mountaineer putting himself in historically good company. Um, one of the biggest – Hurts for myself is to kill shorts leaving. He was pretty crucial uh, a lot of the season being there when we needed him. Fifth in school history on receptions, yeah. one seven to seven. Yeah, you don't, you know what I'm yeah. saying. He was, sixth in receiving yards, twenty two sixty three. That boy good, right? That boy good. He's gonna be missed. He's got some other people around. You know, Karan. He'll be healthy next year. Uh, Gary Jennings. Sheldon Durant, Marcus Sims. Shelton, you know. Uh, and Skylar Howard is leaving. I know a lot of you Mountaineer fans are excited about that. But you got to give the boy credit. He played phenomenal. And I was most impressed uh, with him in the bowl game because he, he was trying. Like I said, he was our leading rusher in that game. He was trying to, he was trying to win the ball game for us. I mean, it mm-hmm. just wasn't there. Um, and I, for one, have been hard on him this year. Sure. But he, he's he been a good quarterback for us, and he will be missed. And we have potentially Will Greer coming in behind him, which is a totally different quarterback. He's not the scramble yeah. down the field for 60 yards a game kind of a quarterback. So, that being said, it may be a little different. You know, a lot of the reason why Skyler had to scramble down the field, you know, people could say, well, it's because he can't throw the ball and he just wanted to run. If you watch a lot of the film, though, the receivers weren't getting open, and that's right. the only option that he had. Um, and I'm anxious to see where that's going to go next year, um, to see how Will Greer is going to adapt. Uh, I don't know if Chris Chuganov is going to stick around. Uh, I haven't heard anything. I don't know if he's going to try to transfer or go somewhere else. Stayed this long. Might as well. Right. Stick around, another, stick around another year, they'll put you out in the slot like he did old uh, William Crest. Well, I mean, you know, you can say whatever you want about Skyler Howard. You know, finished with 37.91 total yards this season. 
uh, third all-time uh, uh, on the all-time list in a season. So uh, that's putting him in company with uh, Geno Smith, and yeah, I mean, you know, you know, what something? can you say? I'll tell you something that has really uh, grinded my gears. You know, people talk about the Big 12 being down all year, all year, Big 12's down. Uh, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I'm pretty sure the Big 12 did better in bowls than the the uh, great uh, Big 10 did. Well, thump the Big 10. The Big 10's only won three. <laughs> so well, saying, yeah. I mean, look, we all knew that was bogus. And yeah. what they did was bogus, and they did that for political reasons, which is not supposed to exist anymore. Obviously, it does exist. Uh, I'm going to cut it off there because you're kind of stepping on my disappointment of the week. You know, he's in good company, yeah. okay? And what I mean by that is he's got uh, 8,470 yards from scrimmage. That puts him third most uh, in in school history, okay? He's only played two seasons for us. Okay? Two and two, a half. Well, two seasons, two games he gets uh, credit yeah. for, yeah. okay? So you've got uh, Geno Smith and Pat White ahead of him. Geno at twelve, just a little over 12,000. Pat White at 10-5, okay? So we really can't complain too much about the guy. I mean, sure, there's a lot of stuff we would like to see him do, but we're not playing ball out there with him, you know? And, a lot I mean, of uh, the Mountain Air Nation's problem, myself included, we are still stuck in the Pat White era. In a lot of ways, we want that quarterback that's juking people running down the field for 150 yards a game. You mean the most dangerous man in football? That guy. When we had the best conference in football. But Them guys. They destroyed it because they're political, greedy, scumbag. Hey, that reminds me, Pitt lost. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Warms you down in the car yeah, because your heart doesn't die. Oh, man. Yeah. But that's yeah. That's that, guys. Uh, obviously, 2017 is a whole other ball game. We'll be there before you know it. Um couple of months to prepare uh some of the commits around the nation that are coming to town david seals you guys have heard about him mm -hmm. it was actually in morgantown once before i'm pretty sure am i right yeah fun guy to watch thought so ball players coach holgerson says yeah i enjoy that uh dominic maiden wide receiver six foot five that's gonna be nice to have definitely uh hakeem bailey quarterback six foot ezekiel rose defensive end six three 260. Jalen Harvey, defensive tackle, 6'2, 310. Uh, you ever watched uh, Key and Peel? You ever seen the little bit they do when they're naming the, the East and the West uh, 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 All Star game? We've, Pro talk, we've talked about this. Well, anyway, this guy reminds me of a guy that they would talk about. His name is Quandarius Qualls. Yes. Don't he? Okay. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Quandarius. <laughs> and then you got K Kelby Wickline, offensive line, 6'5", 280. These are all JUCO guys that have already signed up. Come on over, guys. Let's um, win some ball games. So people that's committed that uh, um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a verbal commit, or, but they haven't signed anything as far as I've known. Uh, Tyler Thurman, offensive line. Maverick Wolfley, linebacker out of Morgantown. I don't know if that's Stone, Stoney's uh, brother. Because we got a Stony Wolfley on the team mm -hmm. right now, and that's the son of uh, the Wolfman, Dan Wolfley. Right. Uh, I don't know if that's brothers or cousins. Yeah, I think we mentioned that briefly two shows ago. Did we? I think, yeah, because it came up. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I uh, I don't do the best of jobs I'm telling you one. I don't do the best of jobs talking about the recruiting talent because it's usually that boy from here or uh, that fella from down there or. Uh, I did Ju Juco guy that fights you for a hamburger over there. <laughs> right. Uh, here's another guy off of Cam Pills team, Extra Low, a cornerback out of Pennsylvania. Sure. Uh, we always use quarterbacks. Quarterbacks. It's a name. family name. Uh, Demonte King, cornerback. He's only five eleven. So I'm anxious to see where that's going to go. He's only 175 pounds, so he's probably quick. Bulk him up a little bit in off season. Feed the kid. Darius Stills. Or is that Darius Seals? Darius Stills. Marcus Coleman, Colin Smith, Ricky Johns, Tevin Bush, Eugene Brown, Derek Pitts Jr. I've heard that name. That's the kid that hurt his knee there. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully he'll be okay. Mike Harley, uh, wide receiver, 5'9", out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Alex Sinkfield out of Delray Beach, Florida. A lot of three-star, a couple two-star guys on, on the – uh, committed list, no four stars, no five stars, but that's okay. Uh, we'll turn you on to, uh, into a five star once you get here, right? Well, we'll get you. 
we'll get you. Welcome aboard, fellas. Look forward to seeing uh, what you bring to the table there next year and the years to come. But right now, Jack, if uh, unless you have anything else about uh, any of the commits or anything, we're going to cut to a commercial and come back. Go for it. Okay, we'll be right back with Mike Molina, guys. See if we can get us an extra point or two. Hey guys, we got Mike Molina on the line. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Well, me and Jack sitting here today. Our our partner Mikey, his ovaries were hurt and he couldn't make it today. Oh man. How you doing tonight, Mike? I'm doing good. Doing good. Just hanging out with the fan. That's Mister <laughs> Fifty One of Fifty One became only the second kicker in school history to make at least at least fifty extra points without a miss this season. Way to go, my friend. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll tell you what really tickles me about you, Mikey, is uh, you are from Hurricane, and you stuck around and played ball here in West Virginia, man. We appreciate that, brother. Yeah, it's, it's been an honor to be able to play for this home state, and, you know, it's, uh, it's really just been awesome. Um, here's a question before you take you back a couple of years there. How old were you when you realized that you might be good at this kicking a field goal thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well... I, it was about my middle school years, so about eighth grade. Uh, I conv I finally convinced my dad to let me play football. You know, I'm not the biggest guy, right? So he told me the only way I could play football if I was the kicker. So like, if I got rough or anything, it's a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> so really, probably when I was about like 14, I started noticing when I was going to camps and people about my age that I was I was doing pretty well. So that's kind of when I started pursuing that. So uh, wait. We we appreciated having you this year, man. Definitely. Oh man, it's it's been it's been a great year. I'm just um really happy I was part of this team and uh, everything about it. It's just been awesome this season. Ninety six points, man. You were the leading scorer on the Mountaineers, brother. How's that feel? <laughs> that's pretty crazy, you know. I never really thought about it like that, but now you saying that like I that's insane. You know, I never really thought I would have a chance like this, and then now I'm the leading scorer. That's awesome. Well, hey, man, total license. Next time you see any of the guys on the team, especially any of the uh, receivers or backs, uh, make sure you remind them of that. Yeah, make sure you remind them <laughs> Sounds like I definitely uh, I should. I should say that a lot more. Sounds like they need to be buying you a beer, my friend. <laughs> I'll see what I can do about that. <laughs> so we had Nick O'Toole on the show earlier this season. Man, He told me you guys bucked for a little bit when he was in Morgantown. Yeah, he's uh, he was my roommate for his last two years, and Ever since I got a, uh, so it's like the last two years we were roommates, and me and him, we're uh, best friends, and, you know, we still keep in touch all the time. That's pretty awesome, man. Did he have any uh, weird quirks or anything that you kind of was like, well, that's just weird, man? <laughs> you know, he always took care of his beard, his mustache, and he would take about two hours in the bathroom. I, I'd say that's <laughs> a weird thing. He's a well-groomed man. That's the Yeah. <laughs> Well, them boys down in Texas said that girl's crazy about them short dressed <laughs> men. So. <laughs> Little band from Texas. Oh, Lord. Well, uh, not to give away too many trade secrets, Mike, but uh, talk to us about the uh, first, uh, first couple seconds before that kick. What's going through your mind, or is anything going through your mind? Uh, really, the main thing going through my mind is just knowing that I've done it so many times. I just go up there with confidence, and it's just something I do every day at practice, so that's kind of... I just remind myself this is something I do about 100 times a day. So Muscle memory. Yes, sir. Have you uh, ever heard Lonesome Kicker by Adam Sandler? I have. My dad used to play in high school. <laughs> Another blocked kick. Because you was raised <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm he used a, to make fun of me with that. I'm a fan of your dad then, man. He's, yeah, he's got exactly. good taste. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a personal question. If you don't want to answer it, I understand, man, but do you think you beating out Josh Lambert as a starter when he come back had anything to do with him leaving the team? 
I'm just going to leave it. I mean, I wish the best for Josh and everything he does, man. I'll just leave it at that. Hey, that's cool, man. I appreciate it. You, you don't know if you don't ask, right? You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Um, I got one more for you here. Jack, you got anything for the, for the man since we got him on the line? I'm all right. I kind of go off the cuff, John. Yeah. That's uh, what I do. I'll throw this out at you. Have, do you ever watch any of Dana, Dana's uh, press conferences? Uh, I've, I've been told a couple things. <laughs> well, he had you back here, man. Right when Josh come back, somebody said something about, uh, I think you missed one from like the 35 or 38-yard line. Or somebody said something about, is Lambert going to be your guy from 40 yards and out? And Dana cut him off right off the bat. He said, well, hang on a second. He said, uh, uh, Mike, Mike's got more uh, pop than uh, Lambert does. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I was like, man, I guess uh, either the coach is just mad and he don't want to listen to this nonsense or he's uh, he's got his uh, his kicker's back. Uh, no, I, you know, Dana, a really good guy. You know, I know he believes in me. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Right on. Uh, one question, we, we kind of throw this out to uh, everybody, regardless of position. Coming up, if uh, you had some advice to give an up-and-coming uh, kicker prospect, uh, besides going to camps or anything like that, what would you tell them? Uh, you know, I think I'd tell them just to hang in there no matter the circumstances and, uh, you know, just try to do you and control what you can control and just get better every day. Right. Mikey, he's the lonesome kicker. <laughs> hey, Mike, we appreciate you ha 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 having you on the show, man. Hope to get you on right. some other time, brother. Great job. All right, man. thank you. You guys have a good one, all right? Take, Take care, Mike. Take care, brother. All right. All right bye, bye. See ya. Nice kid, nice kid. Mm -hmm. Those who Adam Sandler is, he's all right in my book. Yeah, you're making me feel like Mike's dad and stuff like that seems like something i would do oh, i was just life. saying to him man i know i know you were <laughs> season's are. over it is uh, i mean what can you say about the season ninth 10 win season in school history i'll take that still there's uh, still haters out there that's what blows my mind you still got these idiots that are going to come out next year and boo players that's not performing they're uh what they think they should be doing well, there's that part of me that uh, embraces the hater, and then there's that other part of me that's like, ah, Wants to take him to the bathroom on. and pee on his leg? Well, I mean, that guy almost got, I mean, he, it sounds like he almost got dealt with. <laughs> like, you know, but uh, ninth 10-win ten, ten season in WVU history, tied for second in the Big 12. I mean, it's, it's good. You know, I uh, read a good article today, and I can't remember um, uh, who wrote it, but they said it's good and leave it at that. And I think we've got to get to that. You know, I mean, we were a little starstruck there. Uh, team underperformed in that bowl. Uh, but look at it like this. You know, uh, we ranked uh, 12th nationally in first downs in offense, 18th in total offense, 25th in rush offense, 36th in pass yards per completion, and 46th in passing offense total. I mean, it's good. It's bordering on great, and I hate to say that. I really hate saying that. But you look at how it was, you know, two seasons ago, everybody wants uh, we've, Dana Scout. We've come a long way in the last three or four years with Dana, and people don't they, – they seem to forget about that. Yeah. They forget that a couple of years ago we went, what, four and eight? Something four like eight. that. eight. People just totally forgot, forgot forget. about that. You didn't I forget. didn't forget. Mm. I'm talking about these, uh, these wagon riders, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. I, I get it. Well, everybody – Everybody loves it when you're winning, man. Oh, yeah. Everybody digs that. You're the man when you're winning. They start losing. Then you find yeah. out who your friends are. Yeah. Hey, you know, hey, look, we keep doing what we're doing. Uh, improve the punts a little bit. We had, uh, uh, that was probably a real downside for us. Fewest return yards in school history. So, uh, you got, one, got you to pick that up. Jennings jumped, jumped in the ball game? Yeah. That was... But, you know, I mean, it, it was down in 13. It was down in 14, you know, so. Um, something to improve upon. Well, we've we've said it all season, like you said. They didn't play for a punt return this year. Right. They didn't play. They 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 just stood a guy back here and said, hey, catch the ball and down it, pretty much. Right. Uh, I can't remember the number. I looked the other day, but Jennings had like eight yards or something. Yeah, I it was eight. I think it it's was all that, much. yeah. I, I mean, and that's, that's something I'd like to get back to next year. I'm sure they would, too. 
Well, um, you know, I mean, we're developing weapons too. You know, uh, Bill Kenny uh, kicking the daylights out of the ball. Oh, Mike yeah. Molina uh, getting icy. I mean, that's what we want. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, uh, really proud of every. I'm proud of everybody that played this year. I I went to that last game just to uh, just to clap for those 21 seniors that left. You know, I mean, really good job. Uh, I'm not gonna remember your names next year. Not all of you, but <laughs> I mean, I appreciate your contribution. That's you exactly know? right. Uh, Talk a little bit about next year's schedule, Jack. I know we were still a long ways off, but we start the, the season with Virginia Tech, who had a impressive comeback win uh, just a few days ago. Um, and then we play East Carolina, which didn't we play them? East Carolina. The, was, was they in the Big East at one time? Uh, I don't think they were in the Big East. But we played them. We played them. Yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, we played them off and on for the last – 10, 15 years. And then years. we got Delaware State, and then we start conference play. And we have a Big 12 championship next year as well. So that means we will be having one Playing off. Oklahoma back-to-back. -back. Could yeah. be. If uh, we got our stuff together, then yeah. Playing Oklahoma back-to-back. -back. Uh, that's why I hate this. They need to have a East. Playing Oklahoma back-to-back. Back-to-back. Right. Back-to-back. That's what I like hearing right there. That's, that's good stuff. Playing them back-to-back. I'm anxious to see what Kansas is going to, or not Kansas, I'm sorry, Iowa State's going to have next year because they played tough this year. It was there, they just wasn't quite there. i seen the day where uh, Patrick Mahomes, he's going to the draft, so we won't have to worry, yeah. worry about shutting him down like we did this year. Well, I mean, is uh, is old man Snyder going to retire? I, mean, is that... I haven't heard yet. Oh, boy. <laughs> They're going to be tough next uh, year. Of course they are. Of course they They're are. They're always tough. They'll out geezer you at every, every <laughs> angle of the ball. Yeah. They play. They play six angles of ball there. <laughs> Measure twice, cut once. But uh, I, you know, I mean, what can you say? Not a bad season, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, disappointment of the week is a very simple one. We're not even going to cut up the video because I know you all out there are going to agree with me. Uh, Saturday's playoff games. Uh, it illustrates a failed system. I've alluded to that. Numerous times. Well, it's um, the BCS system all over again. It's number one and number two going again. Right. And it's bogus. Penn State lost, yeah. But they should have been in there before Ohio State was. They should have had the chance to play. Well, I mean, you know, you win that championship, you're supposed to go in. Oklahoma know. come in and dominated Auburn. Sure. You know, why didn't they get a chance? Because the Big 12's down this year. Uh, I know you ain't right. got nothing for Oklahoma. Well, no, 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 no. Look at it like this and let's look objectively. He was that at the end of the season when you look back to me that's slander you know I mean that's just that's 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 putting a negative spin on the Big 12 it's down compared to who you know to, to SEC who. was crap this year right garbage you know you got Alabama and, and and Alabama Alabama <laughs> you got Alabama and, and hopefully you can get a game out of Alabama's second team yeah Elsewise, turn tickets in. LSU turned on this year whenever uh, uh, old man got out of there. Yeah, I mean, that. Oh, Coach O came in there and thought that they going to play on the ball and get a oh, touchdown. Man. Man. He's kind of a mixture between uh, dude off of Waterboy and old Boomhauer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was laughing at me a couple say. weeks ago, but my favorite bowl game this bowl season was USC Penn State. That was a great bowl <laughs> hey, game. Hold on a second, folks. That was <laughs> That was entertaining. <laughs> that was entertaining. Tell oh, me, it comes in twos. Tell, tell, <laughs> tell, tell me one that was more entertaining than that one. I don't know. I didn't like any of them, honestly. Uh, last week stuff with the unranked teams, but they still got a game. Uh, I didn't watch those. Uh, Army Navy, Army against whoever else they played. Uh, did you even watch the USA Penn State? You probably did. Right? I, I watched some of it. It was good. I don't know if you understand this about me, but I don't really like football that much. Oh, yeah, um, you told me. Yeah, but no, I, I watched some of it. Uh, look, I mean, obviously, that shows one. I mean, obviously, Ohio State wasn't supposed to be there. Penn State was. You can also make an argument Penn State, that USC should have been. There. You could I say mean, USC should have been in Washington's place, Michigan, but Michigan you know, lost too. I mean, if you have a garbage conference, that's what happens. You know, I mean, I, what what else can you say? Look at the bowl record. I mean, I'm not, I'm not. A, I don't hold the kind of hate against these these schools that a lot of other, especially Mountaineer fans, do. But like, look at it. You're three and ten or three and twelve as a Big Ten as a conference in these bowls, and we're 
we're having a down year in the in the old meat grinder conference in the in the who f and cares conference Come with on. the Baylor's and the TCU's back right. at the ball game. Right. So who was it's not put on a show against? They beat the brakes off somebody. Who was that? They don't like football, John. That's right. But I, I tell you what, man, I've shut up about this. But I, I said it. Uh, I think at the live show. Go back and look and 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 find Coach Saban's comments on YouTube or or whatever service you use about his feelings on guys sitting out of the bowl games, which is a whole different issue. But he gets into how we've we've ruined the the bowl season for a lot of teams playing in these other bowl games. They don't matter. That, that aren't the four, uh, aren't the top four. They don't matter to anybody. I mean. This, the, this the Rose year, Bowl used to be a very respectable bowl game. Respectable? I mean, that was your dream. Yeah. I playing mean, the Rose Bowl. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. You, you know, you win the game, you go wife hunting. <laughs> you staying out in L.A., boy. <laughs> Not anymore. Swimming pools and movie stars. <laughs> what are you talking about? But, uh, no, it, it just, it was it was, it was was a great piece. And I'm always lobbying for uh, Coach Nikki Joe Saban to come back home. Uh, I think that is the... Final crown jewel on the college uh, all time. He ain't got many years left, football. so if he's going to come, ah, he's come on. Ah. He done ran Lane Kiffin off, see that? Well. Kiffin going to Florida High School or something. In, in Sarkeesian there? He's drunk. He don't know what he's doing. Whatever. It's okay. He's actually not going to be coaching the bowl game next week, the championship game. He done left. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't really Jack think don't it, like football. Guys. I, don't, I don't really think it matters, does it? <laughs> no. I mean, look. Uh, Who you got now? Alabama or Clemson? I'm going with Alabama. Been going with them all year. Uh, Clemson. I mean, well, the team uh, gave it gave it everything they had last year. Alabama was a notch above. I think Alabama is going to be a notch above this year. That's a that's a safety pick, honestly. So we'll have to see what happens. Uh, now, best of luck to both teams, and, and, I mean, can you argue that both are the best in college football? One and you two. Could. You could. Yeah. Who else would you put there? I mean, there's – anybody can sit there and make an argument for any team. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot they're going to argue for that second team of Alabama's. I mean, I know they lobbied hard, you know. Uh, guys, we want to throw out a couple thank yous. Uh, this season has been phenomenal. As you guys probably know, this is our first season doing the Mountaineer Ramble. You guys have been very responsive, and we really appreciate it. Uh, I want to say thanks to El Mariachi and Beaver, uh, Daryl Ramsey, who is our uh, voiceover guy that you always hear at the beginning of the show. Thank you, Daryl. Chris Meadows, who helped us out with the high school ramble. Bad Dog Graphics, that's where these lovely shirts came from. Um, John Burrell, Matt Kirby, Jim Covey, who is my father. He's helped us do some leg work. Dennis Spangler, Adam Repass. No Kirk and Shane Riston, who donated some tickets to the Mountaineer Ramble, so we were able to give you guys some uh, uh, football tickets and basketball tickets this season. J.T. Thomas, Nick O'Toole, Isaiah Bruce, K.J. Myers, Aaron Beasley, Quincy Wilson, Dell Sparks, Maloney's over in Summersville for letting us shoot the live show there. We appreciate you. Uh, Noble Wachuku, is that right? Wachuku. Wachuku, Mike Molina, and most importantly, you guys watching this video right now. Because if you guys wasn't watching, we wouldn't have... Uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. I mean, we could, we could, but what's the point of using making a video if nobody's going to watch it? That'd be like making Blair Witch 2 or something. Right. I don't know. Uh, we don't... have almost 3,000 likes on Facebook, guys. Thank you so much for that. Almost 500 uh, followers on Twitter, which Twitter I'm kind of new to. It's kind of a whole new universe compared to uh, Facebook. Like um, it again. Tell your kids to like it. Tell your kids, kids to like it. We got yeah. over 100 subscribers on uh YouTube, uh, averaging... Wives, girlfriends. I mean, can we diversify our <laughs> fan pool a little bit? I mean... <laughs> averaging over a thousand views per uh, video. Um, thank you, guys. That's pretty much all I can say. Uh, throw a couple more on there. Uh, tonight, specifically, and, and you've helped out with my content throughout the, uh, the uh, season. I don't know if you watch or not, but Chris Anderson, great stats, great research. I uh, really appreciate that, and... Uh, Mountaineer 24-7, excellent source. Do great work. Mitch Vingle. Uh, I know I'm forgetting some other guys that we've mentioned before in the Mike writing. Mike Kazaza. Mike Kazaza. Uh, thanks, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Dig right. Boys dig over 304 right. Sports, we really enjoy you, what you guys do. Definitely. Um, so uh, a lot of those guys. Charlie Thomas uh, comes to mind, a uh, uh, call-in friend. 
Uh, appreciate you calling in, man. We'll talk to you next season for sure. Look forward to seeing you, brother. Um, and uh, everybody else out there in Twitterverse, uh, my dad for getting his legion of followers and fans uh, on board with us, some of them, and um, uh, and everybody else that that uh, caught the show once or uh, watches it uh, weekly. We're going to come back and uh, be bigger and bigger, better next year. This is the last show, guys, until the spring. Uh, Blue Gold Game Time. We'll be back uh, for a one-off until next fall. So keep your eyes open. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. You know, you know, we might get lonely for you and uh, throw a little uh, basketball, basketball shot or something. Maybe some baseball. Baseball's been doing good. Morgan down. Oh, uh, Randy um, Maisie down there up yes, there sir. doing things. But that pretty much... Uh, Sums it up for the Mountaineer Ramble 2016. It's new year. I don't know if I can wait till next year, Jack. Come back. Yeah. Knock that off. Yeah. Guys, Woo! for Jack Kincaid, Michael Covey, wherever the crap he's at, I'm John <laughs> Covey Cole. Until the springtime, guys, ramble on. Thanks, baby. Ramble on!